Alrighty folks, well as you can see it's been an excellent year. This is my third time of the year. I've now got two down in Kentucky and one here up in Indiana. Brought this one back home. I'm doing a full body mount, but this is the first bird I've ever even got to actually put on a limb. I've killed several that could have, but never even thought about it. But they're always cool pictures, so I figured I'd finally get me some. But uh, he only had one big hook because he broke the other ones. So we got me a battle-born awesome turkey, but I know we have about a week and a half, two weeks left here in Indiana, so I figure I'll, while I have the moment, I'll give you all just a little rundown on ways maybe you can be successful if you're having a hard time. So one thing I'd like to tell you all, don't call much. It's been very successful for me for just this season and last, but just minimal calling. Just a little bit to get their attention, let them know where you're at. If you get them gobbling hard, the gnats are killing me, I'm sorry, but uh, get them gobbling hard, you know, give them a little fire off real quick and then just kind of fade out and let them come to you. That's one way to do it. I'll give you a little rundown on how I do that. It's not great. I'm a horrible caller, but it's been very successful. So if it works, why not, you know, just keep going with it. It's just something I do just to kind of get their attention. Maybe try to find one little, you know, location gobbles, whatever. But uh, sometimes if that don't work, I'll just switch to an actual gobble. I'm not great at it, but sometimes it does sound pretty good. <laughs> now that works out for me quite a bit. That immediately gets all these other birds in the area to understand, hey, there's another bird probably right towards that hen that should probably start moving in. Just shut up at that point. Now they know it's somewhere in the area, they're going to come looking if you just don't give them any ideas that that wasn't a real gobble. The other thing we've really been successful on this year, if we have one just hung up over the hill or just a little bit out of the way, a few scratches when we do just some light clucking and then stop. And then you just do a little bit more scratches, let them know there's still something over the hill and it could be a hen that he's interested in. Another thing that might help y'all is camouflage. You really have to worry about your camouflage being pretty close to the environment. It's springtime, it's a lot of green, there's a lot of new growth. You really need to have some green in your camo, definitely leafy pattern. This has been super key to my success in the last few years. And another thing I like to do is cover my hands. I'm a filmer, so I'm always trying to hit record and stuff. I've switched to now having it on my handle, but that's still, you have to reach up, and if you're self-filming, that's just part of it. You gotta, you gotta move to make filming work, so. In other words, a lot of birds get to walk before we even actually get to pull the trigger, so. Maybe y'all get a few of them, because a lot of things we hunt is public land. I mean, as you can see with this little bit of breeze, these leaves are kind of blowing, and it gives me that natural vibe that just, it's not gonna throw off a turkey at all. It's been, like I'm telling you, game changer for me. All, all y'all, if you're really trying to be super successful and have less 45 to 60 yard shots, you want them in close. Get you some leafy stuff, get up against some brush, a little stuff in front of you kinda helps. I always have a little pop-out blind in my backpack I can pull out. It's got little stakes and just boom, boom, boom. We used it in deer season very successfully. We killed bucks, we killed does. Now we've killed turkeys out of them. You can use them in the evening, the morning, the afternoon. As long as you focus on their routine, following that loop, you can cut these birds off or just be there when they want to get there, whichever you want to do. If you want to run and gun, you want to sit all day and kind of deer hunt them, we were very successful in every way we tried. So I would say uh, as long as you are very observant to your target, to your prey, you can really pattern them in a matter of a day or two and have them figured out. They're gonna do basically the same thing. You definitely wanna make sure your hands are covered. That's the number one thing for me because if my hands have to move, something needs to be, I'm pretty white. Let's just put it that way. I'm a very light color. It doesn't work out in the environment. This here hat, this has been awesome to me. I wear a bandana, I'm bald anyway, so it helps me. But this covers all the shininess, any whiteness I have here, that's covered now. Usually I'm not wearing sunglasses when I'm hunting, but I do have the beard that helps quite a bit. But face covering, if you can get rid of that last little bit of glare, that, that bit of white, this has been awesome. I found this on eBay for like 20 bucks or something like that, it wasn't bad. But put that sucker on, get your face nice and covered up, line it up, you can hide it real well. If I was here, sitting like this, even if I had to move a little bit, if the wind's blowing, I'm covered. You can't see any glare. This helped substantially this year. I'd like to say we uh, we done probably our best season so far, but for me it was definitely having all my parts covered and 
looking as environmental as possible. Just trying to really match everything. That turkey just sees anything that's out of place, anything that's too perfect with lines like our bodies. You may be wearing camo, but it's still a straight line that doesn't, you know, it just doesn't work, it doesn't fit. And they catch on to that better than we do. Also, this was the first year I've ever killed a spring turkey from a blind, so that was really cool. We got an Indiana double on the ground when we turned around and went down to Kentucky after a couple days of hunting with Tiffany, and we ended up getting our Kentucky double, which completely blew us away, but uh, the blind, we use one of those, uh, it's the newer with the front two panels being kind of a mesh see-through. Those turkey, we just popped it up two hours before then. They've been there the whole season. I've had trail cameras in the field. They knew what that field looked like. Did not bother them a bit. They came in. Uh, my, my luck was actually the two hens, one feeding, one head up, facing different directions, and a strutter available to spin. Jake, real fan, absolute killer. They came right in, strutting through brush, and worked our bird, worked our decoy set way better than I would have ever seen. Them I just wasn't able to actually get my window fully open to film what I think I would have loved to film more as a videographer. One thing that might help y'all when you're doing the scratch technique to calling any turkey, they don't do more than a certain amount of scratches. They kind of come in and they'll... That's three. That's the typical amount. It's either three to five is my count just from videoing for years and going back and kind of <laughs> looking into it all. That's kind of what they do. But they just come in and then they'll peck around a little bit, wait about a few seconds. Just the same thing over and over. They're just moving and they'll, they gradually move. But they gradually move across their area. And what I've also noticed is they do a circle. It's a daily circle. They get down, they work a certain area in a big loop back to the roost where they started. Usually that loop doesn't alter much. Caught it. However, the loop doesn't alter much. It's only altering so that their food source isn't overly harvested via themselves. They eat snails and salamanders and small grains, clover, all the little bugs they can find under leaves. That's just their daily routine is to make a giant loop slightly different every day and come back to that same one. They just slowly work in a big loop. I've noticed once the toms get on that pattern of following those hens on that loop, easily patternable. If you really pay attention, you can pattern these things so quick. <laughs> same thing with public land. If you're on public land, there's no fields. It's the exact same thing. They're working ridge, bottoms, ridge, bottoms. They're hitting a creek probably about midday, usually somewhere after 11. They got to get a little drink, go back to doing their thing. They'll probably do that one more time. I've just not personally found that time frame. As we reach kind of the tail end, you're starting to see these toms branch off. Some of the hens are kind of done breeding. They're just going to be feeding and laying on their eggs, feeding and laying on their eggs, and then sleeping. So essentially the toms are going to start looking and then they're going to start fading. They're going to stop gobbling more. You're just going to need to be where you know they've always been. Uh, the Jake decoy definitely works in those scenarios. If you know where they're going to be in the evening, especially if it's a field or kind of open timber, you put that Jake decoy with a couple of hens. Now all of a sudden, this Tom's going to come in, you know, hey, what are you, little dude? You ain't, you ain't supposed to be here. This is my place. I'm going to take those bitches. That's how they work. Pardon my language if you're a puss. That's also how it works. <laughs> well, that's about as much as I can come up with at the moment. Uh, it's been a hectic day. We just got back. I've got to get this thing back in the cooler for now. I'm going to take some pictures here shortly with the kids and getting skin up. I'm going to do a full body mount. I'm working on something special. It'll be way after everybody else. I'm still kind of behind everybody. It's bullshit, but, you know, once I get a couple more done, I finally get to start working on my own mounts. I'll actually give you all a few of those videos. And if you're interested, I'm going to get to do a little video on how to take out the gizzard and how to get the rocks from it, clean those. Uh, I'm actually ordering a few sets of jars to see what I like better. Obviously, probably don't want to go actual glass because they could shatter. But, uh... Yeah, it's starting to warm up out here, so I'm going to get this thing in the cooler, and hopefully a few of these tips are going to help you all be successful. Good luck. But that's just uh, my perceptive way of saying, hey, you know, these things are super figureoutable. I'm relatable. Y'all cuss, I cuss. We don't give a fuck. 
the guy down the road can't drive. I don't know. Whatever. This might be an outtake.